Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for our Portal TV webinar this morning. Uh, we're very glad that you could join us for this webinar, which is all about responding to information requests. Uh, this morning, I have with me Senior Access Facilitator, Will Beaumont, and uh, Will's going to be taking us through three practical scenarios as well as answering some of those key questions about, you know, why is this topic so important? Um, before we get stuck into the content itself, just a few housekeeping things. Uh, the presentation will be, so the slides that you're looking at at the moment will be uploaded to the Help Centre after this webinar, as well as the video of the whole webinar. So if you uh, have to leave or you've missed sections or you want to go back and uh, double check some information that Will's provided us, uh, the video and the slides will be available uh, in the Portal Help Centre. Um, there is an opportunity to ask questions. It's probably easiest for this, I would suggest, by emailing support at nhvr.gov.au uh, and we will respond to those uh, through our dedicated team. Now, this morning, Will, uh, we're always looking for useful topics for customers and uh, this one came up as something that the access team wanted uh, wanted covered about effectively responding to information requests. So, why is this? Why has this been an issue? Or well, what is the impact of uh, of not understanding the process? Um, I think a lack of understanding with the process um, initially results in a lack of information. So, there's kind of three stages that we would require information if it's been missed out at initial assessment stage or when uh, an application has been submitted. Um, if information is missed there, you can have an information request sent to you. Also, once it's been sent to consent, road managers may require a little bit more information or even just clarification hmm. on uh, information that's been provided. Um, that gives an opportunity for an operator to clarify or submit um, additional information just to help out and give support to their application. Um, also, when finalizing a case prior to issuing a permit, if there's any questions that arise or information that's required, then that scenario would be applicable also where we would need to send you an information request. So the key benefit of knowing exactly how to respond to these information requests uh, in a timely fashion is that that's going to allow the customer to speed up that process. So once an information request has gone out, uh, we are waiting for that information before the application can progress. Yes, that's So correct. it's really important that you guys keep an eye out for when customer information uh, is requested and being able to respond to that uh, as quickly as possible. Now, to illustrate the idea of typical information requests that you might receive as a customer, we're going to look at three common scenarios that, again, the access team said, you know, these are uh, typical. One is about load information. Uh, one is about uh, an alternative route. And the final one is about third party approval. So once we go through a couple of these initial slides, Will's going to step us into the actual portal and we'll run through each of those examples. Now, after your permit is, uh, after you make your application, it becomes a case. Yes. That's correct. And within the portal, uh, we have a case tracker uh, module and it's within the case tracker that you will be able to see our little green bar here, which is about customer information being required. Yeah. Excellent. Um, now, you mentioned that we may wish to confirm a range of information, either ourselves or the road manager may make these sort of information requests. And I think we're going to cover off some of the, the, the more common ones. Uh, now, you mentioned there's probably three stages in the uh, permit application processing uh, uh, process where you might be asked for more information. And that first one is even before it goes to road managers. Yes. So is this where access facilitators have uh, reviewed the initial application? And usually, would it be missing information? Missing or incorrect, depending on the class or the configuration that's being applied for. There's certain 
information that road managers require prior to doing an assessment on what's being requested. So if we see missing information or information that may be um, a little off from what's required, mm -hmm. we'll send you an information request. So that's so we can make sure that we're sending uh, the most accurate uh, and full information to the road manager to ensure that they can make that consent decision as easily as possible. Yeah, that's correct. Um, then during the consent process, the road managers may ask for some additional information, that's correct? Yeah, so once it's been sent to a road manager, um, they may have a look at it. And one of the scenarios we're gonna look at today is additional, uh, sorry, um, an alternate route. So there could be instances where there is infrastructure that's not suitable for the route that's been applied for, and a road manager might suggest an alternate route or human error. Maybe we've missed something at being assessed and a road manager has picked it up and said, hey, we need clarification on this they could send us an information request also. And then there's even possibility that information, additional information may be required from the customer during the finalising of the permit? Yes, that's correct also. Okay. So all three stages uh, or, or statuses within the duration of your application, there is a possibility that you would receive an information request. Correct. And it's just so that we as the regulator can issue you a permit that is um, accurate as possible. Now the good news for customers is that no matter what the stage is, the process is actually the same, isn't it? Correct. Um, what, we've, what you'll see here in the slide pack on the right is the, uh, the generated email that gets sent to the, uh, to the account email. The, the primary, primary contact. So within your organization, you may have a number of contacts within um, your portal. Um, you can select which one of those when submitting your application will be the primary contact on that case. Right. Now, the primary contact on that case will be the one that receives the email with the link to the notification. Excellent. Um, but aside from that, anyone that has access to your organization's portal can have a look at the information. There's just uh, a bit of a workaround to get there. so once they're logged into the portal, and we'll go through that today within the scenarios right. to show where they need to go to have a look at that. Excellent. So you would be able to see that customer information is required within the portal itself, that little green notification bar, yes. as well as an email generated to, to the, uh, the, the primary, primary, contact. primary contact. Fantastic. Uh, now, You'll see a, a screenshot underneath of, of the information request area. This will make more sense once Will gets us into the actual portal, but essentially the process is, is really straightforward. Selecting the case, click to open. You'll go to case management, requests, and you'll see information request. You'll select that request response template, provide the additional information and complete the information request, adding comments, uploading files, whatever the additional information uh, that may be required. The good thing is once you've updated that information request, it will show on the portal that you've actually, uh, it has been responded to. So you'll know that it's, uh, that it's been done. Yes, and as soon as it's been responded to, we get notifications also. Um, and it's instantaneous. So as soon as you respond, we will get a notification indicating that it's been action. Right, knowing that we can then look at the new information provided and, and progress. That's right. That's awesome. Now, this is really important, and I know that uh, this is something we wanted to reinforce as part of today's webinar, is the response time frames. Uh, and they're, they're quite reasonable, but they're pretty specific. So it's worth remembering for everyone watching today. Uh, we have a 14 day window that is the allowable time frame to respond to that information request. Uh, you'll get the email and you'll be able to see it in the portal as soon as it's uh, created. But at seven days, we also send a reminder. That's yes. correct. Yeah. At 14 days, if no response is received, a reminder will be issued to the customer contact as well as the account administrators. And then at that 15 day mark, if no response is received, the case will be closed. So the thinking behind that will is that we can't 
progress without the information. That's correct. And what would be the follow-ups from there? So if someone does not respond and the case is closed, they will need to uh, make a, a new application? A new application, uh, depending on the circumstances, a case-by-case -case basis, if there was unforeseeable things that prevented you from responding, um, you know, we're here to help you out also. So just notifying us and we're able to reopen that, but it's it's mainly, you know, 14 days is pretty reasonable to, yes. to respond to um, a request. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, just you, very useful to, to uh, remember these time frames. So let's get into the, the practical examples. Uh, as we mentioned, we've got three here. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is about an alternative route. So very typical, uh, when someone makes an application, they want to go to a, a certain destination, uh, there may be uh, issues with the particular route that they've chosen, but that's not to say that they can't get consent to uh, make that trip if they agree to, to an alternate route, either uh, usually provided by the road manager or by ourselves. Um, either or. Either. If, we, if we pick it up, we can suggest an alternate route. Um, bypasses for oversized vehicles may be applicable. Maybe they were mixed out initially and we've picked that up that it's a certain dimension and it needs to use bypasses. Um, we could then submit an alternate route proposal to the customer, a road manager also. Um, now, under the law, they can refuse for certain things, risk to public safety, uh, infrastructure, damage to infrastructure. Um, but ultimately, we would prefer to have an alternate route proposed before issuing a, a refusal. So that gives the road manager an opportunity to propose something alternative to what has been uh, requested yep. by the operator and um, still gaining access. So. Yeah, still get making, getting there in the end, yep. just maybe using a, a different way. So the scenario that we'll be looking at, the road manager has advised that travel on River Street, Elbow Street and Belgrave Street is not permitted due to mass restrict, restricted infrastructure, in this case culverts. Uh, to avoid travelling over these structures, you'll need to accept the alternate route by taking C Street, an approved B double network, onto Belgrave, and then please accept the alternate. So that is the sort of information that you'll get as part of the request. You'll see that we've provided some step-by-step -step, uh, instructions as to what to do within the portal to respond to that. Um, rather than go through each of the steps now, we're going to, uh, we'll have Will do that for us. So we might skip to the second scenario, just so you'll see the three that we'll do. Uh, the second one involves an application indicating a total GCM of 42.5 tonnes. However, the registered vehicle supplied indicates a maximum rate of 40 tonnes. So some, somewhere something's gone wrong in the information uh, on the application. So the request, the information request to the customer is to update the vehicle details with registration complying with the requested mass or to adjust the application with the revised mass applicable to the 40 tonne rating. So that could be human error. Um, yep. It could be something that just needs to be uh, changed up, but it will prevent the permit application from being uh, progressed until that, that issue is resolved. Yep. And again, uh, if you're going back over this webinar or you're looking at the slide pack afterwards in the help center, there is a step-by-step -step, uh, approach that will be useful if you're doing it in your own time. The final scenario, and probably the simplest one in many ways, uh, is customer information request, in this case, to provide third-party approvals from the relevant telecom and electrical providers. So again, not, not um, unusual. Very common. Um, most oversized loads, any that are above five metres, um, usually require a third party from such parties as those. And it's the customer's responsibility to provide that information. So that would usually yep. be some kind of upload, I assume. Yep. Um, so that can be provided at the time of the application. Yep. Um, sometimes it's not been applied for yet or they haven't received that third party yet, so they're not able to attach it. It can be attached at any time, mm -hmm. um, but a, a request can be sent if it's been missed out. Uh, we cannot issue you a permit if a third party is required until citing one of those third parties that are applicable. So, makes sense. Yeah. All right. 
So what we might do now is go into the portal itself. I will hand over the reins to Will. Okay. And we might start, I think we're going to start with the alternate route, is that right? Yes. So as you see here, this is the view that you as a customer will be seeing within your portal. So if you're already logged into the portal, um, you haven't received the email and clicked on the link to take you to that information request, um, you can access it in a number of ways. One of the ways is up here in the top right hand corner, you can see a bell and that is indicating that you have notifications. Uh, when we click on that, you can see there's a number oh, of yeah. uh, requests given and we're going to click on the one that's applicable for this case in particular, which is the alternate route proposal. Now, um, when we're having a look at this alternate route, please be aware that this is training data and we are aware that the road manager that is implied within this case is not actually within um, the area that we're looking at. So we're just using dummy data just to illustrate. Data. Yeah. Yep. Um, so once we've clicked on that notification, it takes us to the case management area and the requests underneath okay. the case management. Um, any requests that are submitted will be underneath that requests tab. Um, and it will keep a history. So any requests that have been made will all be listed here. So if there's more than one within the same application, uh, a history of that will all be listed here. Perfect. So we would go and click on that. And we see from the road manager, please provide travel, sorry, please be advised, travel on River Street, Elbow Street, and Belgrave Street is not permitted due to mass restricted infrastructure or culverts. Um, it could alternatively be there's a school on that particular run yep. um, and it's not appropriate for a heavy vehicle to be going through the school zones. Um, that's also applicable. So alternatively, alternatively, if you wish to avoid traveling over these structures, you will need to accept the alternate route by taking C Street, turning from the approved network on North Street onto Belgrave Street, and indicating their desire for you to accept this alternate route. Um, alternatively, if you don't accept the alternate route, there is an opportunity for you to adjust the route and submit an oh, alternate right. route yourself, mm -hmm. proposing an alternate route. Um, back to the road manager. But so that will then go through that same process where it is, if that road manager thinks that you're, even your your alternative route is still unacceptable, they may come back. Come back with another one. Yeah, whereas if this if this works for you, then this is going to be the quickest way to go, yep, I can I can manage that, and you'll know that you'll, um, you'll get the road manager's consent in this That's case. That's right. So here we see they've proposed alternate route two. So from there, we would go to our route management tab. And we can see oh, yeah. here in the route history, this is the That's initial the one that we have submitted. Coming down here and ending up here. So it's coming from the B-double network to another B-double network. You would click on the route history, which gives you a drop down box and we would click on the alternate route, which is being proposed by the road manager. Okay. Now, in this instance, you can see the original route is highlighted in a, in a blue a line. Blue icon, yeah. So it shows what initially was requested and the alternate route, which is being proposed from the road manager. Now, in the case where this doesn't work for you and you needed to change it um, for any circumstance, you can make that adjustment and if you save it, it will create another alternate route. Now, um, if any changes are made um, within this particular setting, if you click on the pencil next to the dot, you can amend the description of this particular, it could be a site destination, it could be a network. So if you reference that network, if we go back to North Street, a 
and then edit, we can actually indicate that it is an approved network. Oh, yeah. Now, it's important to do it with the pencil in the editing area. If you click on the link itself and type in, it will change the point. Understood. So if we wanted to say that the uh, road manager's proposed alternate route is fine with us, how do we go about accepting that? Um... So within the route history, go to the drop down box, click on the alternate route that they proposed. Mm -hmm. We've reviewed this, it will meet our needs. Um, we would then go back to the case management and click on our task and we would respond. Now, potentially, if you need to attach any um, additional information or files, you have the ability down here in the bottom right to add a file. That is a drag and drop also, or you can click on it and browse. Um, but it could be something it, as simple as saying, alternate route accepted. As simple as, uh, yes, I accept. Once that's done, you submit. submit response. You make sure that the information is correct. Excellent. It closes it off and you can see on your end that the request is now sitting with us as a regulator. Awesome. That's great. So that's our, our first scenario. Uh, customer information requested, alternate route. It's been fine, very straightforward to go into that request, update the information, or in this case, simply accept the alternate route and submit. Fantastic. Yeah. Should we look at our second scenario, which I think was some additional vehicle information? Yes. So when receiving the email, there's a link. If you click on the link, it will take you to the case tracker or the case. Um, that the information request has been given. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're already in the portal, please refresh your browser. If you're already in the portal, you can go to your case tracker. This shows all your active cases, and you can see here with the green indicating customer info required. And that brings us to the application. Huh. Now this is the same, um, virtually the same steps as if we were clicking on the bell in the top right hand corner. Yes. It takes so us to case management, case management requests. requests, and we're able to see what is being requested of us. Right. So just in the case details, oh. we're showing here that the requested mass is 42.5 ton. Whereas in the vehicle information, our prime mover only has a GCM of 40 tons. So he's unable to do the payload that he's requesting. So that information requests describes that and asks for clarification. Now it gives you um, a description of how to adjust that information you would need to go in and adjust that information yourselves within the portal. Okay. And once that information has been um, Adjust. adjusted, so here you can see update permit. Ah, uh, yes. So yeah. we would click on that update permit button and it would take us to the permit container where we can either change the registration to meet the payload that we're requesting or, just or we can go to the overall requested and change that to mm -hmm. something that will meet our vehicle standards or yeah. our vehicle uh, reading. So we would save at the bottom, save and oh, yeah, return and to the request. So to it the takes request. you yeah. right back to the request after saving that additional information. You click on the request again and it would open up. Now you have that comments box. 
It's the same functionality as the previous request where if you need to attach a file, um, you can add it at this point. If it's not applicable, you don't need to attach a file, you can just simply say yes, thank you. I have updated the information. Click on submit response. And once again, That's once finalizing, finalized. it changes and you can see that it's now sitting with us as a regulator for review. Fantastic. So again, very straightforward and the portal's even helping by if the vehicle information needs to be updated, it'll allow you to go, it'll direct you to the changes that need to be made and then allow you to come straight back into the request to finalize that information. Yes. Very good. So our third and final scenario is about third party approvals. Yes. Now this is pretty straightforward. If a third party is required and it hasn't been attached or indicated, so from here, we'll go back into our case tracker. You can see this one is requesting information. Case management. Request. Request. So exactly the same each exactly time? The same. Regula uh, regulator internal, uh, sorry, information request, third party approvals. So this could come from us as the regulator indicating that third parties are required. Mm -hmm. It could also be from the road manager. Um, yeah. Now, earlier we spoke of the different statuses that the case is in. This information request could come at any time. It could be during the being assessed stage. It could be during while it's consent. going out to consent. It could also be while we're finalizing and preparing your permit. It could be an information request yeah. have your third parties attached. And you were saying that people may um, make the application while still waiting for their third party approvals. Yes. Um, knowing that at some stage you will receive this request to go, you know, we won't be able to finalise this until you provide yes. us with that information. So with the application, we can assess it, send it for consent, receive consent, and even start to draft your permit. Um, but until that third party is cited, if it's required, we can't issue you the permit. Excellent. That's good to so know. So in this particular one, he's requesting for third parties. Um, when third parties are requested, mm. you'll find in the request there is a link. Uh, that link will take you to all of the third parties that may possibly be applicable and give you contact information for, for them. Right. So for this particular one, We'll say, please find third party attached. And you would oh. attach a PDF or something similar? Now from there, depending on your desktop mm. or, or what, whatever is available to you, you can click on the add file button, which will allow you to browse your computer and attach those applicable files. Yeah. If you already have a window open or you have uh, an attachment on drag the desktop, into. you can drag it and drop here. Into that, okay. And it will attach it. Right. Once that file is attached, uh, we'll just do this one here. The attachment will show up sure. here. Any attachments you can see in that drop down box. So there may be multiple attachments. Um, all of the attachments applicable to that case you'll find within that drop down box. So Once say that there were several documents or several approvals required. Yeah. Yep, you could add as many. Once we're happy with that, we would submit the response. Again, are you sure? Or sure. And it goes back to us as a regulator. Right. So I think that's the, the reassuring thing for me is that regardless of the nature of the information request, that process, that case management into the requests, provide the information, whether it's accepting the alternate route or reviewing and accepting the alternate route, whether it's updating vehicle information and then submitting, or whether it's providing additional information such as third party approvals, the process is actually identical. And that will show you clearly when the information, when you've actioned it, and that is sit, then sitting back with the regulator for, for the next steps. That's fantastic. So before we finish up, I did want to um, 
just quickly show we have in our um, I'm sure it's on the help centre as well but also on our uh, main website we do have an information uh, handout about this exact topic information requests so you'll see if you are looking for it under publications in the regulator you'll see uh, our publications many publications but under access we'll see here permit application information requests fact sheet and that will take you through to this PDF so if you're the sort of person who does prefer a hard copy uh, handout printed off next to you while using the portal this will give you uh, the same information that Will's been taking us through this morning so again trying to be uh, uh, as helpful as possible now if we just quickly go back here Obviously, uh, we have a lot of support available for people uh, regarding the, the portal 24 7 via the Help Centre, and I think it's worth uh, reinforcing that the Help Centre has all of this information, including past webinars, uh, fact sheets, guides, uh, help articles, everything that, that you would need to. Uh, to Get, give the support that you need. Um, we also have phone support is available via the call centre and we do have dedicated staff who can really help you step through any blockages that you have while making applications or understanding the status of your permit application. And our call centre operators are available from between 7 and 5, Monday to Friday. So, Will, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, taking us through, the, the, I think, the very practical demonstration. I think that was really useful. Uh, if anyone watching has additional or specific questions, I'd encourage you to email support at nhvr.gov.au and we'll make sure that you get a response to those uh, as soon as possible. So thank you very much for watching our webinar this morning. Uh, it will be available as a video as well as the slide pack on the Help Centre and our YouTube channel shortly. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.